homegrown. Homegrown, cool. Less. Less, large scale scrum, okay. You know, there's also, you know, there's some of the simple scaling is like scrum, it's, you scrum with scrums. It was already built in to, 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 you know, if you got a couple of teams, just do that. You don't need, so let's talk about it, right? I love this little cartoon. <laughs> You know, don't scale bad agile. Another way to look at it is the football metaphor, which is get the fundamentals right. Blocking and tackling before you do the razzle dazzle flea flicker play. Okay? So, does anyone know what this picture is? You safe people should know this one. What are those yarn? What is the yarn for? <clears throat> Dependencies. Dependencies. Whoa! Right? You know, what have you, what have you done here? You've just slowed the system down. Right? So what are you optimizing for? If you're, if you're optimizing for career safety, <laughs> then all you got to do is retitle everybody with um, new titles, but keep the same function. Right? So you keep the component team. Well, I'm in charge of the database team. I'm not giving that up. Whereas, you know, in, in, in real agility, you can't produce done soft working software every sprint if you've got a database team that everyone's dependent on. So that may not be the best way to scale. Craig Larm would be the first one to say that, right? So you might be optimizing for developer busyness. I don't have time to explain what the local optimization problem is, but who knows, who's heard of local optimization in flow, right? It slows things down by speeding up one little part of the end to end. It doesn't help you to speed up the development teams if it takes 19 signatures in three weeks to get something in production. <laughs> because by the time you get into production and discover something's wrong, they moved on and now they have to context switch out of the zone and into fixing something. So you address the bottleneck. Um, so maybe you want to optimize for, for concept of cache. Now there's something that actually I can support. I need a feature in the production. When it's in production, I'm making money from it. Shortening that time means maybe we can find a better way to get those approvals happening, find a better way to do governance, find a better way to take care of compliance, and security, and all of those bottlenecks, which is really, most of the bottlenecks are outside of your team. So having, you know, we're agile, we do, use your agile, you do stand-ups, no you're not. And you have to think lean, and by the way, the executives follow lean more than they do agile. Mm -hmm. So you wanna think concept to cash, you wanna think producing results, because they want execution, right? So maybe you wanna increase, to be able to turn on a dime for a dime and increase flexibility. You can optimize for that by not painting yourself in a corner, by planning in short cycles. You can optimize for market fit and share growth by partnering with and talking to your actual customers. You might actually build what they actually want, which they weren't able to tell you until you discovered it together in a collaborative way. Uh, another way to optimize is to consider you want to do something that's going to optimize total life cycle profit over five years. That's a good business thing to optimize, yes? Which is very different from developer busyness. I don't want to see, I had a CTO would say, I don't want to see developers twiddling their thumbs. Yes, I do. If two developers on a team twiddled their thumbs or played ping pong or read a book at any given time and it, it doubled the output by all means. If painting the walls blue, double the output, then paint the walls blue. Measure what matters. And you know, maybe reducing waste. And there's a whole topic I do on this that comes from Lean and Toyota Production System. Everything Agile stands on the shoulders of TPS. Yes. So you really want to understand Lean Manufacturing and the Toyota Production System to understand what this is really about and where the waste is in all those weight states. There's a lot of waste, but that's the biggest one. It's waiting for that other team to finish something. It's waiting for that yard. 
And usually that yarn is connected to not necessarily another team, but for to get approval from compliance on something. Right? Oh, well, the security at the bank I was working at had a, you needed to know ahead of time at least three months what you were going to ship so they could do their analysis. Not exactly uh, amenable to that. So, are your choices consistent with those goals? And how do you establish, you know, the flow of value of the customer? So these are the questions you should ask yourself. So, we talked about, here's two things, one thing from the manifesto, one thing from the scrum guide, right? Which is, uh, someone read that. I'm tired of reading the screen. Someone read that out loud for everybody. Deliver working software frequently from a couple of weeks to a couple of months with a preference to the shorter time scale. Yeah, right? So we, we talked about that, right? And then someone read the other one? This is from the Scrum Guide. The development team consists of professionals who do the work of delivering a potentially releasable increment of done product at the end of each sprint. A done increment is required at the sprint <coughs> review. So at least once every most sprints are two weeks, some are one week, some are longer. You actually have something done. If you want to follow the scrum guide, I and mean, if you're not doing what's in the scrum guide, you're not doing scrum. That means potentially shippable. That means there's nothing, there's no hardening <laughs> sprints. Okay, you got something you could put in production now. Otherwise, it's not scrum and it's not agile. Um, and here's the local optimization problem. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I think we can get more onto the truck, but we didn't think, you know, downstream what the effect might be. Um, so I'm gonna skip this, but you know, there's a lot, pay attention to other things like silos and small batches and things like that. Uh, Nigel Thurlow teaches something called Scrum the Toyota Way, and he gets into this in great detail. It's good stuff. And you want, so you want to you create the feature teams with all the, the, including security, compliance, and all that, all the expertise you need to get things done. So I'm going to just share really briefly. I'm going to take about three <coughs> minutes and share. At CNN, who is it that did their own version of scaling? We did that. We had uh, six, we went from one to 16. Well, what we did was we brought the, the work to the worker and we had, um, either we, we split off like the people doing the satellite control, this would be this team, which was a, pretty much independent of the team that was doing video edit stuff or uh, codec conversion. So one way of making them independent, that's fine. is well, one way of making them independent is uh, splitting up the backlog. The other thing we did was we rotated who did support. So one team, when you've launched something into production, you, you might be the team that rolls it. Now you're doing support. You switched over, you know, we switched over to Kanban with that team and they would support every other thing that was in production. Handle all the emergencies and interruptions while the other five teams were focused on new work. And you got, you rotated onto that and then after a while you rotated onto the next new sexy project. So everyone had their turn doing maintenance. And we, if we had more than one team working on something, we had a scrum of scrums. And a scr who can tell me what a scrum of scrums is? Anybody? <coughs> Agile experts, people have been working for years, yes? <coughs> Why would they do that? So everyone understands what, what they will deliver then. Because everyone would deliver the same system. They deliver the one system to them. Well, it's, it's that everyone understands that we deal with any dependency issues or bottlenecks or common problems, right? So we can do that with um, the Scrum of Scrums. So we just rolled our own at CNN. We built a $55 million uh, uh, end-to-end, -end, high-definition, global news gathering and news editing workflow system 
in 18 months with virtually no overtime, which was unheard of at Turner Broadcast. And a lot of that was, you know, me and my boss and some other people collaborating on how can we scale. Because, you know, I was hired, the boss started with one team. And he was this English guy, a friend of mine, and we just bark at people, telling them what to do. I guess we're working in the dark. Okay. Um, this is fun. And so he hired me to help him scale, but what he hired me and Jay for was to help him bark, scaling the barking. But what we ended up doing was um, creating these systems where the teams could work independently. It worked really well. lighting thing is distracting and I was actually trying to take a video so I apologize. I think that's really, um, I just want to, that's really all I have. I just want to know if you, have, you can stop the videos. Any questions?